Working. Are we going to uh, go ahead and get started if people want to uh, take their seats? So welcome everyone to the, uh, the College of Education. I'm Gabrielle Allen. A few people come in. Um, I'm the Associate Dean for Research here at the College of Education and um, I'd like to welcome everyone here to our celebration of 100 years of the Bureau of Educational Research at the University of Illinois. We expect to have a very diverse audience here throughout the day. From We're expecting people from at least uh, 10 different campus units to come and, and visit the college. We do have a full day of events for you to enjoy. We're going to reflect on the past, envision the future, and also celebrate the present of, of research in the college. I hope everyone will come away from today understanding more about the impact that the Bureau of Educational Research and Educational Research in General Illinois has had in our community, in the state of Illinois, in the nation, and in the world. But also, I hope you'll see that there's a lot of potential for continuing to contribute to pressing and urgent educational issues, both now and in the future. As, as we look back at the 100 years of the Bureau, we see that it's really a story of adaption continuously to current needs and trends. And today is really an important part of that story. We're going to have talks, panels, and demonstrations that will think about how does the Bureau support educational research, uh, and what will that research even look like as we enter the next 100 years here? Before we get going, I want to call out, particularly to say thank you to Beth Nicewander, who's sitting at the front here, who has... <laughs> has, ...has really paid a lot of attention to the programme today. You've seen these fantastic history slides that have been planned. Beth has done a lot of work to make sure that we um, have a good basis of, of understanding what has happened in the, in the Bureau. Those slides are um, available on our celebration webpage now, and we really invite everyone to look through them and see all the, the amazing things that have, have happened, that the Bureau has been part of and the College has been part of. Um, uh, I'd also then like to just call you, go through quickly what today's schedule is um, that you'll see in the programme that, that you have. Um, we are capturing the morning sessions on video, um, and for that reason, this is why we're using microphones. So even though people in the main can, can project their voices, we're asking anyone to use a microphone, and if you ask a question, we will get a microphone to you, so we also have that recorded. Um, we're, we're first going to hear from Dean James Anderson. Uh, following this, we're going to move to, the, to, we have two panels this morning, we'll have our first panel. The first panel will finish at 10.15, we'll have a, a short 15 minute break for people to stretch their legs. And then the second panel will start at 10.30. And then we're going to finish at uh, 12.15 and move to lunch, which will be upstairs in room 192. Um, we very much invite everyone to stick around here for the afternoon. We have a research showcase that's going to be going on in here and in the, the room opposite. We'll have demonstrations, talks and stories from um, 11 of our current research teams in the, in the college. And then finally, the advancement team here is, is organising the grand opening of the college's new O'Leary Learning Centre, just down the hall here. And those events are going to kick off at 3pm in room 2, which is also just down the hall. So, hope everyone will stay around for all of these uh, events. So, to set the stage for the, for the Bureau's uh, anniversary, I'd first like to introduce Dean James Anderson, who's going to talk about the importance of digital education for our uh, future workforce. Dean Anderson, and his... Oh. Sorry, I just... Okay. Dean Anderson <laughs> in this college in 1973 and then joined our faculty in 1974. He's the Edward, William and Jane Mark Goodsell, Goodsell Professor of Education and is also a member of the National Academy of Education. Okay. I just want to say thank to all of the people who have been involved in the planning of this. Uh, a lot of hard work has gone into this, and on behalf of the college, I want to say thank you. Um, it's a great day. Um, I think as I look out, there are a few of us who have been associated with the university for more than half of the centennial. <laughs> <laughs> I know who you are, and you know who you are. And uh, it's good to, to, to see the presence of some of our distinguished faculty who helped to build the Bureau as well as the larger College of Education. Very pleased to have Fuad back, Dean of the College of Education. Fuad had me down a couple of years back, and to give a talk and um, get to 
meet a number of his faculty. I knew a lot of them already from meeting at ARA, so it's great to have you back uh, at this it's time. Back. Uh, I know how difficult it is to find time in your schedule to get away, but uh, we're pleased that you're here. Um, I probably have some colleagues who are not here, um, people like Bill Trent and others who would be laughing if I was speaking on digital education. <laughs> <laughs> They still say that I'm an expert with a number two pencil <laughs> beyond that. Okay. And it is true, by the way, that um, you know, for a long time, writing, you can write in a book. I wrote it with a number two pencil and a legal pad. Um, and um, some of you will never have that experience. <laughs> But um, it's how the world has changed. Now, I did want to say a following thing. So the college, of course, is very committed to digital education, uh, predating my time as dean, and not my time on the faculty here, uh, going back to when former Dean Glances built Delta. Um, and we now have, and there are people here who can give you a much more comprehensive and detailed explanation as to what we're doing. Tia Ed, Rob Lindgren is in the back there. You, Raise your hand so they could see what we're doing in educational technology. ISTEX, there's Luke Paquette there that we're uh, very, very pleased where we're going. Now, <clears throat> here's sort of my view of what we are as a state and what's important. I was actually a presidential fellow when President Colleen began to talk about the development of DPI, the Discover Partners Institute. And it was quite obvious to me, and in fact, I asked him at the time, I did say, because he said, well, it's, it's kind of modeled on Cornell Tech. And I said, um, and, but he said, it's going to be three times bigger than Cornell Tech. So, and so I started to do some research on Cornell Tech, and I said to him, I said, uh, I noticed that the workers at Cornell Tech, two-thirds of them are international. And I said, that would tell to me that Manhattan did not have the talent coming out of his K-12 system, his community colleges, and four-year colleges sustain the new economy that Cornell Tech represents. And I did say to him that um, maybe Manhattan is sophisticated enough to, uh, to live with this, but if you go to Chicago and build DPI and two-thirds of the workers are imported, uh, Chicago will never forgive you. Uh, and so, I began to think early on about the development of young talent. We learned, because we actually went to Chicago, uh, the president had a chance now to meet with Janet Jackson, who is the CEO of, uh, of the Chicago Public School System, that they had just instituted a mandate where all of their graduating seniors would have to successfully pass a course in computer science. Well, if you knew anything at all about a state, it was like, who's going to teach it? We don't have an endorsement program. We don't have a certification program in computer science. We don't train teachers to teach computer science. So how are we going to develop that talent in the absence of that? So we started here in the college of making moves to address that. Um, and we are continuing to do that. In fact, uh, this past week, we learned that ISBE approved all of our syllabi in computer science for an endorsement. But we are moving ahead to have a full-fledged certification program um, and to work with other partners in the state. Because I'm always mindful of the fact that uh, as a university, as a single campus, and as a system, we're about one third, we're about number three in the state in the production of um, teachers. But 40 miles away is Illinois State, that the third largest producers of teachers in America. That means you really need to work with them if you're going to affect the kind of changes we're talking about. And they were co-sponsors in a way of our summit on computer science. Uh, and you, you learn more about that. Uh, Gabrielle was uh, the leader there. Uh, and they work with us. So we have to think about how do we get digital education, um, particularly uh, skills that are necessary for the new economy, into our young talent um, and develop that um, in a much more systemic and comprehensive way. But I also thought about from the beginning that digital education, we keep thinking about the new economy. You know, and it gets people focused on economic kinds of issues. But is it less important in civics than it would be in the economy? Yeah. One of these studies I, I, I 
referred to people a lot. This came out of MIT, and there were three scholars there published in science, and what they wanted to do was simply to test the old Mark Twain notion that uh, a lie is halfway around the world before the truth gets out of bed. <laughs> and they did that with about three million sort of tweets. And what they discovered was that falsehoods are passed on much more rapidly than the truth, and it's not by bots, not by robots. It's by individual to individual. <clears throat> and then they began to talk about the impact that could have on the economy that we normally don't think. And they gave one example of when it was that our stock market lost $130 billion in value just by a false tweet that Obama had been injured. Yeah. So how do our young people, as we prepare them for citizenship, are able to sort through this? Um, one of my concerns about Russian interference with the election was that, in the election was that, well, we didn't know the difference. We are supposed to be informed citizens making a vote. People send stuff at us. They take something like Black Lives Matter, and they get people all <clears throat> around us, and they have no way of knowing the credibility of one story versus another story. And so as we talk about digital education, it's more than just the economy. It's also citizenship uh, and, uh, and preparing the next generation to deal with uh, a digital age that's going to be coming at them at breakneck speed and it's going to affect how they vote, how they uh, are informed. Another thing, as a story of education, we've often, we've often looked at the lag between changes in the economy and how K-12 is always trying to catch up. And it means that we do need social scientists and, uh, and humanists out there asking a uh, very fundamental question, how do we know that the claims that are made for science are actually justified? If we say that if you learn computational code and programming skills, it's going to you know, um, generate a new economy, how do we know that that's the case? Who's studying that question, that these claims are actually justified? Uh, we've seen this before in the Industrial Revolution, Scientific Revolution, where there were claims made about we saw that in post Sputnik as well. We need more engineers, we need more of this. This, this is going to be a result. But who's studying whether those claims actually are justified? I think as a college, we are equipped to do both. We are equipped to really lead the revolution in digital education. I think we have a, a faculty here that is second to none. There are very few colleges of education that have what we have in Delta, Tier 8, and ISTEX, and so forth. And we continue to build. Uh, but at the same time, we do have other dimensions of this college that look at the same question from a different angle of vision, and we need to do that as well in order to uh, make sure that we're on the right track. So that's, uh, that's, that's I'd like to just uh, get out of the way as a dean so you can get on with the conference, have the experts do their job, uh, to say welcome to everybody, look forward to this great day, um, and um, I will, I'll be in and out. Thank you. <laughs>